Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Triangle Strategy Walkthrough. Alright, so uh, we've just uh, completed the Dwindling Light, which is uh, was Chapter 9, Part 1. Uh, so let's uh, let's load our data here and we will continue uh, the story. In exchange for his aid, Sorcelay orders House Wolfort to transport his illicit salt. Serenoa, however, intends to bring word of the minister's crimes to the holy state of Hyzant. In order to succeed, he must delve deep into the nation's internal affairs while avoiding Sorcelay's notice. So you've decided to accept my proposal. A wise decision, Lord Serenoa. As you have requested, none shall know of the salt's death. But you are still too young for true wisdom, it seems. Huh? He means, let us not speak of the obvious, my lord. It's prudent to speak as little as possible to prevent any unnecessary complications. One never knows who might be listening. <laughs> Fortune favored you with a capable retainer. I beg your pardon, Minister, but I must entreat you to recall the aid you offered in exchange for ours. I give you my word it shall be done. Booker, I'll leave the rest of the arrangements to you. Yes, Minister. If you all will follow me into the antechamber, we may discuss the details further. Okay, let's, uh, let's see here. We've got a side story here. So, Council of the Saintly Seven speaks with the merchant Claris on members of uh, matters of salt and receives a startling report. Uh, some missing. <laughs> what? Who would dare send an army to test our borders? They are soldiers of House End, by all appearances. Sorcery, you go too far too often of late. Perhaps this means the rumors are true, Minister Cancel. There is still nothing to conclusively prove End's involvement in illicit salt trading. Which is why you must investigate. You are Hyzant's Minister of Domestic Affairs, are you not? The illicit salt market grows larger by the day, strangling our own trade. Against one of the saintly seven, I can do nothing without the Hierophant's express permission. Perhaps you cannot. But is there not another with plans already in motion? Exham, you mean? Even so, I am not at liberty to act on naught more than a whim. I must prioritize our land stability above all else. I don't think I've ever seen two um, two different main main story uh, events on the map at the same time. Uh, let's take a look here at the White Home Castle. Uh, Cordelia reflects on her duties as queen. So, I am queen. What should I do? You should listen to the Archduke and obey. Is that all the Archduke wants? An obedient wife? And here I thought the Esfrosti valued freedom. So long as you must look to others, you do not deserve freedom. <gasps> freedom is a privilege, and only those with the strength to see their will realized are deserving of it. It is not given, it is taken. And it is not often taken easily. This I know.
I see. Thank you. Next time you think to ask that question, answer it yourself. Brother, father, look over me until I find the strength I require. What is Gustadol thinking to marry a sniveling brat? No glory is worth her dismal company. It is unacceptable. He should have let me deal with those obstinate boars in Glenbrook. <laughs> I want to deal with those two shits. All right, Serenoa and his retinue decide not to transport Cersei's illicit salt, but will their risk see them rewarded? You've made a bargain with Minister Sorsley? The appearance of one in any case. But we mustn't grow complacent. Aye. One of his men wouldn't stop glowering at Benedict. He may yet suspect our true motives. Nevertheless... We shan't stray from the course we've decided upon, if that's what worries you. Tell them, Benedict. Minister Sorsley has asked us to deliver unregulated salt to Esfrost by means of a secret route. We shall make it appear as though we are bound for the Grand Duchy, but in truth, we shall divert from the route and make for the capital of Hyzant. I've already scouted the way, a shortcut through the ravine. Then you intend to use the illicit goods to prove Minister Sorsley's crimes to the Hierophant. But will a little salt be enough to land one of the saintly seven in the dungeons? After all, he's influential and well-connected enough to have weathered unsavory accusations for years. If we don't present our case perfectly, we're apt to be the ones clapped in chains, not the other way around. We only need get to the capital for our plan to succeed. The saintly seven may pretend they stand united. But there are cracks in that facade. If we but exert the right leverage, Sorcelay will fall. Indeed. Now then, we shall depart come midnight. As you command. Erator. Uh, <clears throat> right you are. Quiet as a mouse I'll be. Serenoa and his retinue depart the Citadel of the Sands under the cover of night and make their way to the Hyzantian capital. They press onward through the moonless dark, guided by naught but the faintly flickering light of hope. Okay, um, so we've got another uh, side story here in the Citadel of Sands. Uh, a report from one of his subordinates spurs Sorsley to ta take a new course of action. Hmm, my, my, my. Pass Wolford means to betray me, you say? What leads you to believe this? A chance sighting one of my vassals had of a suspicious woman. Apparently poking around the path to the capital. From her description, there's no doubt she was none other than Anna of House Wolfort. The woman who serves, incidentally, at Benedict's right hand. She is his creature. I see. Then they mean to bring evidence against me. The danger is too great to be ignored, Minister. Indeed. I trust you will take care of it before it becomes a problem. Of course. I've sent soldiers that way already, and I shall join them shortly. Ah. 
This one's like the uh, the spy got made. Uh, in the dead of night, Sarah Noah and the others approached the Citadel of Sands on their way to the capital. Good. We haven't been followed. No cause to relax just yet, milady. The moment you drop your guard is the moment the enemy is apt to strike. Ain't it, Benedict? Indeed. This is where I would position soldiers for an ambush, were I to set a trap for us. Aye. A hunter would have the upper hand here. Let us scout the area to be safe. Okay, uh, this should be the exploration phase, indeed. I should see how the others fare and ensure we've not been too conspicuous. Oh, I already see a uh, so poison recovery pellet. Uh, who would have thought that one of the Saintly Seven would be so bold as to illegally distribute salt? I'm sure Sorsley has been meticulous about hiding his misdeeds. He'll no doubt be equally observant of us. Sorcelay will not hesitate to shed our blood if he finds out we are moving against him. It is fortunate that everyone is ready for battle, for I sense one will find us soon enough. I pray we are not attacked for trying to bring injustice to light, but should it come to that, then so be it. I will not back down. I have no choice but to report such a naked abuse of power. Indeed. Alright, let's... Um, oh, hello. Let's see a little glint here. Ranged windstone. Alright, let's talk to Aragor here. The sneaking doesn't suit me, if I'm honest. I'd much rather take the fight to him. But worry not, I'll keep you safe, even if they try to ambush us. Um, all right, so again, I'm going with, uh, or I've kind of swapped over to Liberty Choices. So uh, the top option is the Liberty Choice, uh, middle is Utility, and bottom is Morality. Uh, so do keep your voice down, Eridor. They'll not ambush us so easily if they cannot hear us coming. Ack, forgive me. I got caught up in the moment. Though permit me to say that keeping me speaking at a whisper might be harder than simply taking our steel to him. <laughs> he is a apparently a very boisterous fellow. Uh, let's talk to Hewitt. It takes a true veteran like Eridor to see the signs of an ambush lying in wait. I am well impressed. Though I lack his experience, I swear to you that Prince Roland shall not fall under my watch. Indeed, it is as Eridor says, the enemy is apt to strike when we drop our guard, spoken like a true savior of this salt iron war. Do not fear for me, Lord Serenoa. I shall do my part when we reach Hyzant. Oh, I see a glint. Oh, hello, what's this? Twelve, twelve hundos. <laughs> um, and I missed, I missed something over here. That must be this square right here. Fortifying spice times two. Um, let's see here. Looks like there's only one, one more left. Oh, I see it down there. Right there. All right, that should be it. I'm gonna check one more time here. Uh, 
two poison recovery pellets, a ranged wind stone, the 700 coin, the 1200, the two fortifying spice. Yeah, that's that's it. Excellent. All right, so uh, Anna is next here. Uh, if the enemy has set a trap for us, it may have been my survey of alternate routes that alerted them to our presence. I felt eyes on me multiple times. I pray they were not the enemies. Oh, indeed. All right, so uh, top option for Anna is utility, or, uh, middle is liberty, and the bottom is morality. Uh, again, I'm trying to go for a liberty point, so we're going with the middle option here. So we uh, cannot be sure they were. Perhaps it was someone sympathetic to your cause, as it were. <laughs> I think not. You jest. <laughs> I do. I do not. I know of none more dedicated to their craft or their task at hand. You inspire all of us. Surely it is not so fanciful an idea that you might gain the admiration of another. I, I thank you for the encouragement. I confess I've never heard such kindness. Oh. Okay. All right, that is it. So we will end the exploration phase now. I should gather the others. Perhaps they've found something by now. Uh-oh, we got busted. All right, so uh, Valley of Dunes. Um, I'm going to save this, I think, for the next video. What the, how much time do we have left? Oh, man, I just started this video, too. But um, I like to try to keep all of the, the um, you know, the battles in, like, separate videos. Um, I'll probably do some stuff off screen, though, as well, um, just to uh, just make sure everybody's up to snuff here. So... Um, actually, yeah, why don't I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a little cut here and then I'll pick it back up uh, and probably discuss just a little bit of, of where I'm at as far as my characters go. Okay, so um, before I end this one, I wanted to go over a few things. And I think I've actually got a character story that I can uh, knock out here as well. But um, I, what did I do? So I, uh, I, I, uh, jeez sharpened, increased, upgraded uh, Benedict's weapon uh, and then I went with just the speed increase which <laughs> after after having done that I, I'm wondering if that was the greatest thing to do uh, what I mean by that is like uh, speed is always really really good but uh, the problem with making Benedict uh, like too fast like, actually let's take a look here I'm so I'm pretty sure what happened now is, unfortunately, Benedict is a little bit faster, I think, than Saranoa. So his speed's 26. Yeah, okay, so Saranoa is actually technically just as fast as Benedict, but um, it was kind of nice there for a while because uh, what was happening was I was having, and Saranoa is basically my, I don't know, my, uh, he just destroys everything. And, uh, and then the nice thing about having uh, Benedict a little bit slower than him was Saranoa would act in combat and then Benedict would would act pretty shortly after and uh, unfortunately now that that isn't the case and Benedict is now acting before Saranoa and the issue with that is uh, I like to use Benedict's uh, now ability which you know basically makes it so that Saranoa can kind of act twice right in a row uh, so that that kind of stinks that you know now Benedict is a little bit too quick, but uh, that's that's fine. Um, uh, so yeah, all right. Anyways, let's uh, let's take a look here at uh, the weapon upgrades though. Still, um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm forgetting who else. I think it was ha Hazabara could uh, upgrade as well with the same item, which I think was a uh, oak or something like that. But I don't I don't really like her and I don't use her that much, uh, so that didn't make that much sense. Um, Anna's got the, the weapon potency and the speed. Anna is just... Anna is insane. Um, the fact that she can act twice in battle, she's so fast, and she's got that, and she's got stealth as well. I mean, Anna might be the, like, second best character kind of in the game, in my opinion. She's, uh, she's, she's really good. Really, really good. Uh, and I mean, she's just she's just so fast. It's absurd. She gets to, uh, turns all the time, and she gets to act. You know, make she gets to take two actions. It's nuts. Um, Rudolph here. I I don't remember if it was this. Well, it wasn't this this video that I upgraded his weapon, but it was pretty recently. 
Uh, but I did upgrade his, and then I got him, or I've got, I've got the potency increase with him, uh, the strength increase, and then I gave him a speed boost as well. You know, really, I, I, I definitely recommend getting speed uh, boosts on anybody that you can. It just, you know, getting turns more often is, is the, probably the, the number one thing that you want to do in these kind of like tactic style games. Uh, Gila still doesn't have her weapon upgraded. Uh, I, I had considered uh, upgrading uh, Hewitt's weapon, or uh, yeah, Hewitt's weapon, but uh, I went with um, I went with Rudolph instead. She's probably going to be next, though. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess there isn't really that much option, right? It's either her or uh, or uh, Archibald right now. Uh, but yeah, she'll she will most likely be next. I think that. Um, yeah, I mean, she's she's amazing. She's one of the one of the better characters. Uh, Eridor, I haven't done anything with uh, Yulio, Hathara. I really haven't done much with any of these other characters. And again, I, I unfortunately just think that most of these other characters are just completely outclassed by you know the the like the automatic characters or the characters that you just get through the storyline. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Um, you know, they just seem a little bit more specialized, and the other characters are. Yeah, I don't know. They just seem like they're... They're just not good enough. <laughs> um, Azana right now is is really terrible. I think that maybe, uh, depending on what these two skills are, uh, that might make her at least a little bit more usable. But right now, uh, because she her, her skills are so um, expensive, uh, she just doesn't... Um, she's, it's the same problem with Narv. Um, you know, his abilities are too expensive, and... Um, there's no way to to get around that other than other than I suppose if you're if you're using Yulio and and constantly giving people TP with him, but you know then that's taking him up and I don't know I I really like uh, uh, him giving TP to um, Benedict so that Benedict can give an entire turn to somebody else you know sooner. It just it just makes it. It, it kind of it's kind of like a burst phase, right? In the, if you're familiar with the MMO terms, it just means that somebody, in in specifically, it's you know either really Serenor or, or Rudolph, for instance, can put out a ton of damage, uh, really really quickly, and uh, and really you know focus a target down. Um, so you know I, that's that's kind of been my way of using, you know the, I guess these two together. Um, but anyways, that's, um, I think that's it for this. Uh, let's, let's do the last, I think I've got, like I said, another, uh, character story, uh, to do here. Yeah, so this is, um, uh, Flanagan. So the Bloody Shield recounts how he came to be known by such an accursed name. Thank you for joining me in my training, Sir Flanagan. I've learned much from you. In truth, I'm grateful for any training at all. There are few of us hawk riders in Glenbrook. Then let me thank you in turn for a chance to shake the rust from my bones. Seems my mount was keen to face such a worthy opponent as well. Twould seem they are hawks of a feather. Speaking of which, Sir Flanagan. I understand your regiment of riders was the Duchy's finest. Yet you chose to leave your homeland behind. Why? I grew to see how powerless I was. I once believed the freedom Gustadoff espoused would bring prosperity to Esfrost. So I fought, and fought, and fought for the cause until my shield was stained blood red. Hence your title, yes. To think how many lives you must have saved. Do not mock me. I saved no one. Pride swelled my breast with every mention of that cursed title. But in a year's time, what did I return home to find? My poor wife, wasting away in solitude in the throes of an accursed plague. Your wife? Had word not reached you? She mentioned in letters that she felt unwell, but never did I expect it to be so grave. In a matter of days, 
She was gone. Every moment I spent protecting the people, she drew one step closer to death. And I left her to die. Her blood, too, stains my shield. Sir Flanagan, I... Forgive me. I did not mean to burden you with my woes. But you see now, my title is a curse. It is a tragedy, yes. But I cannot bring myself to believe you cursed. And you mustn't believe so either. Well, uh, in a game that's had amazing writing so far. Uh, that's a miss on that little side story there. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to end this one here um, because we've got a battle coming up and I want to keep that in the next video. Uh, so as always, I uh, hope the guide was helpful and thank you for watching.